G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today we want to have a chat about a not so native animal, and that would be cats. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We're talking about cats in Australia. They're pretty dangerous. So domestic cats arrived with Europeans sometime in the 1700s and uh, since then they've colonised about 99.8% of Australia. They're found over the entire continent except for a handful of offshore islands and a few fenced reserves where we've managed to get rid of them. And uh, since they arrived, they've bred up to anywhere between 2.1 million and 6.3 million individuals, depending largely on the season, the conditions and how they're doing. But uh, that doesn't even include domestic cats and all the stray cats in the suburbs. This is feral cats in the outback. So there's a lot of them. So as far as what damage is done by feral cats in Australia, today there's 124 species directly facing extinction as a result of feral cats living in the country. On top of that, they've already been the main contributor to at least 20 extinctions. Things such as the desert bandicoot, the rusty numbat, the brindled nail tail wallaby, uh, lots of our small to medium sized marsupials, especially in arid Australia. This actually works out to be about double the, uh, the potential and predicted damage of something like foxes. So the animal that usually gets the, uh, the brunt of it is uh, number two in the, the scheme of things we've got to worry about. On top of this, it's even worse than habitat loss. Often people who are, uh, I guess, defendants of cats um, point the blame at people. They say, oh, well, habitat loss is the biggest issue. And look, habitat loss is a massive deal for, um, for some species living on urban parts of Australia. But when you look at our list of extinctions, the vast majority of them have been in arid Australia where there's very little habitat manipulation by people. Cats is the major impact in these areas. On top of this, uh, wildlife group Wyatt in New South Wales, uh, they, over several years, wrote down all the causes that led to animals coming into their care. And over several years, cat attacks was the number one reason that wildlife came into care in New South Wales. On top of this, there was a study done by a university in Sydney on possums around the city. And uh, in the three-year study, 40% of their ringtail possums, like this little guy here, were actually eaten by suburban cats. 40%. Now... Even people who own cats, when they uh, were interviewed in Victoria and South Australia, found that 62% of cat owners admitted that their cats brought home birds, and 59% of uh, cat owners said that their cats had brought home mammals. So, look, we, we might say that my cat doesn't do it, but most cats do. Even the cats that don't necessarily take wildlife have the ability to hurt wildlife. Uh, one of the major reasons things like our quolls have disappeared over large parts of the country is a disease called toxoplasmosis. And unfortunately, the major carrier of toxoplasmosis is cats. I worked at a wildlife park where we lost a koala and a wombat to toxo simply from feral cats walking around the property. So even when cats aren't being malicious, unfortunately our wildlife is simply not evolved to live alongside them. So there's a couple of things that you guys at home can do to help deal with cats in Australia. And uh, as far as the big picture stuff goes, it would be something like volunteering or donating some money to groups like the Australian Wildlife Conservancy or Rothwell Biodiversity Centre. And uh, these are basically groups that have invested a, an awful lot of money into fencing off reserves and removing cats and foxes so that native wildlife can live as they're supposed to. So uh, definitely good work. On a smaller scale at home, if you are a cat owner, uh, keep your cat inside. We know for a fact that indoor cats live between two and five times as long as outdoor cats. So it's good for your pet. It's also good for wildlife. It's just the responsible thing to do. You see, if my dog got loose in the backyard, I have to pay a fine. If my crocodile got loose in somebody else's place, then uh, it'd probably be on a current affair. However, for some reason, it's socially acceptable to have your cat walking around the streets late at night. It's simply not okay. It's your pet. Take control. Be responsible and keep them at home. Uh, de-sex him. 
And the other one big thing is I know it's tempting, but avoid feeding stray cats. All it's going to do is let those cats have more babies that in turn will need somebody else to feed them. So it's hard, but uh, sometimes the best thing we can do is either trap them and uh, take them to the council that somebody take them on properly or uh, let nature take its course because feeding them is only making the situation worse. Now, as always guys, I hope you're enjoying our videos so far. If you are, please uh, share them about, smash that subscribe button down below. There's always more stuff coming. Uh, other than that guys, be a responsible pet owner, lock up your cats, help our wildlife, have a good one and take care.